So on my screen, that's the new AutoCAD 2025. We're gonna go over the new features. So I wanted to be open. I wanted to test it, try it, and see some of the difficulties, some of the advantages of using these new features. And I'm gonna try to test it and see how they can help us uh, be more productive, right? When we work using AutoCAD. So I'm gonna open one of the AutoCAD uh, floor plan samples uh, just to play around with the new features uh, and test those out. And the, one of the first features or new features is the smart blocks. So there is a new command in AutoCAD called vconvert. So yes, this is a brand new command. Never seen it before uh, in all of these different years using AutoCAD. So yeah, I can say that this is brand new vconvert. And what this command does is that it, it creates any geometry to a block. So now what's, what's the difference between using this command and using the regular B shortcut to create a block. So let's find out, right? Let's find out. Um, and for that, I'm gonna, let's say, I'm gonna use this chair. Uh, so all of them, all of these chairs are blocks. What I'm gonna do is select them all uh, with the select similar, and I'm gonna explode them. So I'm gonna explode all of these chairs. And the reason why I'm exploding it is because when you create a block, a good practice is to have the layers on layer zero. That's why I use explode to convert them on layer zero also. But anyway, the idea is that when we use this new command, these smart blocks, I mean the B convert command. So let's see, B convert says here on the command line that select objects to convert to blocks. So let's select this chair. I'm gonna select the chair and I'm gonna press enter. So look what happened. So AutoCAD is uh, recognizing some of the same geometry of this chair and is highlighting it for us. Okay, so now uh, says 66 total. So I'm gonna press enter to accept that. And we have this uh, dialog box over here. Okay, it says existing block, new. So smart blocks search and convert so this is a new dialog box guys i've uh, never seen this before i uh, using autocad for so many years and creating more than 700 videos here on the channel <laughs> so so this is a new dialog box that is going to help us convert blocks according to the autodesk website so let's see so existing block new block so i want to convert this chair to a new block, right? So I'm gonna select new. Now use geometry center. That depends on the block, right? Now let's let's see. Uh, let's let's leave that as check for now to test things out. Okay. So we need to specify a block name first, otherwise this will be grayed out. So let's call it chair and let's click convert. So let's see what happens. Here we go. All of these geometries were converted, which is great. And if we go and check the block name, let's see, all of them are chair, which is great. And I can see that the beauty is that it keeps the rotation of those geometries. So that's awesome too. You can see all of these chair geometry had different rotations and they are kept awesome. Now, what do you think guys about this feature so far? I'm gonna do a, another quick test just to see how it works by picking a base point, right? Instead of picking a center because 99% of the time, our base point is gonna be picked either on a corner, center over here, or on the back, no, no not on the back, but not on the center of the geometry. So I'm going to do a quick test for that. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to explode this, this chair block. So I'm going to explode it. And this time I'm going to use the V convert, same, the same new command. I'm going to select my geometry and 
it says 66 total found that's fine I'm gonna press enter and this time the only different thing that i'm gonna do is so okay so that's good that orca it's also giving us this warning here the block name already exists okay so i'm gonna say two for now chart two but this time i want to try a different base point i'm gonna click this icon over here and now i can specify an insertion point so my insertion point i want it to be on the center of this line so i cannot snap on the midpoint of this line so what i'm gonna do is try to turn on some of my snaps or snap settings snap settings midpoint right here so now i can select my midpoint here for the base point and then i can click convert great awesome so very simple to use that's a key and important component and that's gonna i can see this as a tool or feature that i want to use to save a lot of time um, most of the time what happened is on a real world situation right on an office environment most of the time you reuse drawings right from other folks and you might find that there are objects that are not blocks but they are supposed to be blocks <laughs> for instance a tag a wall tag or a door tag so those are those are supposed to be blocks and sometimes because we don't have time to fix this we just leave them but um, with this tool we're gonna quickly fix those um, those errors right by making all of this geometry into blocks and the next feature is this feature called object detection tech preview that's new definitely so it says identifies objects in the drawing that can be converted into blocks so it looks like autocad is really pushing on different features related to blocks for people who are not used to using blocks so you probably wasting time my friend i mean here on the channel we have created so many different blocks dynamic blocks let me click on it okay so it is is a new palette that i'm seeing right here after many years of using autocad it detect palette here we go guys and another palette oops so okay so <laughs> i guess immediately after open the detect palette it looks like it ran and says six sets of objects 60 50 instances found review objects so let's read some of this information guy because it's very important to understand this new feature so tech preview object detection is a technology preview this means that the detection capabilities is continually improving so we encourage you to keep testing it out okay so let's try to test it right see how it works so i'm gonna review those objects um, and let's see what we get guys okay uh, set one of six okay so it's recognizing some of these uh, beams and they are the same they they gotta be the same size i believe otherwise you won't count them as a similar object so let's see let's keep moving to the next detection yeah so another beam right there that it's the same as this other one and the beams that are on the exterior wall that gotta be about the same size okay so let's uh, let's keep scrolling that's stairs so let's see now but we didn't know if this was a block let's see that's a, a geometry that's not a block that's a polyline okay so then we uh let's say detection convert okay so let's click convert uh says displays the convert dialog box which you can use to convert the highlighted instances into blocks let's click on it 
and we have the same the same dialog box as we saw before guys so okay so let's do the same it's uh, i don't know columns or whatever in this case uh, it makes sense to use the geometry center for the beam as the base point guys so i'm gonna click convert and then i'm gonna finish this by closing the detect the detection detect close so that's a new command okay and let's inspect over here okay cool so what do you think guys about this new feature uh, this is another new feature that is pushing us towards using blocks more efficiently right so i'm gonna do a, a second quick test about this feature and let's pull this chair select similar so i'm gonna explode these all of these chairs to test the detect feature to see if if it can recognize all of those different chairs because that would be a smart that would be a good suggestion for me right all of these chairs hundreds of chairs that they are supposed to be blocks to work efficiently they're not supposed to be just exploded lines and if you can give me that autocad then that would be good but if you cannot recognize that nope that's not a chair nope that's not good so this the detect feature couldn't recognize the exploded chairs and that's that's not a good uh, sign but let's see if we can find uh, something else here on the autodesk website so key considerations object detection is a technology preview which means that the detection capability and functionality will be further enhanced and improved over time it's important to note that object detection is optimized for plan view drawings and the type of objects that autocad can detect are continuously expanding currently object detection is best at recognizing the following objects here we go single swing doors toilets bathtubs urinals generic lighting symbols so only, there is only a small list of items that can be recognized so it says object detection relies on machine learning algorithms so the results might not always be completely accurate okay so that's good information that that answered our question why this new feature the detect couldn't recognize our hundreds of exploded chairs so the next new feature is the activity insights let's see so it's right here activity insights now they are putting activity insights under new features but this is not a new feature for from my experience maybe it's a enhancement so this uh, activity insights feature is not new uh, from my experience because i can prove you that uh, by opening orca 2024 because i used this before okay so i'm opening orca 2024 right here and we have also the activity insights palette so okay you all agree that it's an enhancement it's not a like a brand new feature of autocad 2025 so i'm gonna move it on my second screen i'm gonna leave that 2024 open just to maybe test another new feature of 2025 okay dwg history has now been merged into activity insights okay that's interesting let me try to explain this what they're talking about okay so guys for orca 2024 um this new thing and i'm gonna bring orca 2024 to try to explain things to you so you can understand better for orca 2024 uh, there was a new feature a new improvement this is 2024 called dw history and it was this palette drawing history uh, with the drawing versions meaning uh, if you did a change to the block maybe 
yesterday. It will show you here that yesterday there was an update to the file. So that way you can compare and go back and forth between those versions if you need it, right? Now they are saying that for AutoCAD 2025, they combine this drawing or DWG history palette with the activity insights palette. So let's see if that's true then. Let's see DWG history. Here we go. You see that basically the DWG history palette doesn't exist anymore and is right here. Um, anyway, so let's see if we can make this work guys because we see here an error connect to Google Drive to include drawing versions. It's because this works with Dropbox, Google Drive, those um, external storage uh, systems on the cloud. Anyway, so I'm gonna try to uh, connect and I'm gonna move over here, see if I can make this work. Oops. So what happened guys is that when I try to connect here, we're having an error. It says this app is blocked. This app try to access sensitive info in your Google account to keep your account safe. Google blocked this access. So, so far, maybe because the, this new feature is maybe it's not a hundred percent working for some folks as in my case. So maybe they'll, they'll fix this for a, for a new, in a new update. So it's, it's a problem between Autodesk and Google. Google Drive, maybe for folks that use Dropbox, it will work good. For our channel, that's that's good because that means we can keep creating videos and giving you new solutions, right? For new problems that comes with these with these new features of AutoCAD. We have more video ideas, but that's trying to find the good sign. But in reality, we shouldn't get this type of errors. Um, but for now, uh, we have to keep moving, guys. We're gonna talk now about Hatch. So let's see over here. An improvement to the Hatch command. That's that's good because we use Hatches a lot, man, a lot. So the Hatch command now have uh, an improvement, have these uh, new options right here on the command line and now, this hatch command provides an option to draw hatches without the need for pre-existing boundary geometry. Meaning if before we will need a rectangle to, to select that rectangle and hatch that area, now we can use this new option that says rectangle and then we can, uh, let's say, pick a scale or whatever and we can click two points oops and we can do a hatch like that because that's not why i want it i wanted a hatch of a rectangle let's let's keep testing these guys so what i wanted guys is let me do it manually right uh, if we didn't have this new feature so i'll have to draw a rectangle use the hatch select my object select my hatch remove my rectangle and change in some of these scale properties and do something like that. Maybe this is not part of the scope. It's not in, not in uh, the scope. So then we can hatch and put a note on it. But um, now let's see if we can make it work, this new hatch feature. So I'm gonna type hatch and I'm gonna go and so here we go the draw option is new this is the brand new option for the enhancement of the hatch command so i'm gonna select that and i want the rectangle option but for some reason it's giving me a hole on the hatch and i don't want that so let's see let's keep inspecting these new uh, options so settings Nope, that's not what I want. A mode. Now we have a mode. Okay. So here we go. We have area and path. So most of the time uh, we use an area uh, before, but now we have this option path. So, so that's why um, I was having 
a hole on my hatch, on my rectangle hatch. And in this case, I'm going to pick area. And I'm going to change this scale to 100. So that way I can go ahead and hatch. Oops, what's that? Interesting. And press enter. Wow, okay. I guess that's interesting. What do you think, guys, about this um, new enhancement for the auto hatch command, the ability to draw hatches without existing geometry? And I'm going to keep testing this quickly, uh, these new features. So rectangle and look, with just one click and then two clicks, you're able to draw hatches, which is great. Awesome, guys. I mean... I mean, small improvement, but that helps, I guess, especially because hatches are used a lot, a lot in AutoCAD. And there are folks that struggle with hatches. I see people at the office where I work always calling me for problems with hatches. For some reason, they cannot hatch. They cannot trim their hatch, their hatch uh, not showing correctly, <laughs> all these type of problems. So most of, most of the time, uh, well, in architecture, right, we have a roof plan like that, and then we'll add a hatch around to represent the wall or that this is a building. So now with the hatch improvement, there is an option here. Where was it? Mode and pass. And now we can hatch our building or building area like so. That's great. That's great that we can now hatch areas in a path. And before, uh, in order to do this, I'll have to um, do the following. I have to create my rectangle, offset it, let's say 24 or whatever, hatch my area uh, like so, remove my inner line oops not remove or maybe hide it or put it in a different layer but now we have this pass or hatch using a path option so uh, what do you think about those um, hatch improvements mm, next is the autodesk assistant okay where is that feature let's see assistant open guys so we have now this this is not a new feature it's an enhancement guys uh, for the auto desk assistant because i remember i used before this in autocad 2024 and maybe i can i can test that uh, since i have 2024 that will be easy to do so this is 2024 assistant open the command and we will have the palette right there guys so to be honest with you i use this before yes autocad 2024 but uh, i didn't have success using it guys so let's see let's give it a second chance in autocad 2025 so let me put 2024 out of the way so i don't confuse you but it's good to have it open on my second screen just to test things out here and there for you right so here is another i think this is the second the second example where AutoCAD trying to utilize AI to kind of help us, right? Be more productive. And let's see if they uh, says elaborate on questions related to features and design challenges without leaving AutoCAD. Okay, so that means they are trying to keep us inside AutoCAD instead of going to google and trying to search hey how to fix this or how to do this in autocad so autodesk assistant can generate guidance with summarized responses and provide learning resources to help okay so let's see let's test those things then okay it says by continuing with this chat and any subsequent sessions you agree to Autodesk terms of use and acknowledge its privacy statement. Okay, so let's see. Hi, Luis, I see you need help with AutoCAD. I use AI to recommend solutions and can connect you to an agent if needed. This technology is in preview, which means it's new and evolving. Please describe your question in detail. 
Okay, let's simulate a problem. Let's simulate a problem. So I'm gonna leave an open area. I'm gonna, gonna hatch that area and try to get an error. Here we go. So a close boundary could not be determined. That's a very common, guys, a very common problem for many folks. Um, a close boundary cannot be determined. Let's see, let's put this AI to the test. And I'm gonna go ahead and go over here and say a closed cannot be determined. Help me fix this error. Let's see. Okay, let's see. To fix the error, a closed boundary cannot be determined in AutoCAD when adding a hatch, you can follow these steps. Okay, so the first thing I notice is that they know they know what I'm talking about because I didn't say that my error was regarding a hatch or anything, but I just put my error and, it, and they know that I'm referring to an error with a hatch. Now, let's see. Zoom out until all boundaries are visible, then specify a new point. Okay, so they are giving us a couple of steps or to try. Cancel the command and modify the objects in the boundary to close the gaps. I mean, true, we can do that, but that's not the way to go, uh, AutoCAD. Why? Well, because in other words, this number two is telling us find the open gaps and fix them manually. And you can imagine if you're hatching a huge area or something, you don't wanna find out where that gap is or where those gaps are that would be a waste of time so but anyway five if precision is not needed increase the gap tolerance settings here we go so that's a good one too so very good so i think these autodesk assistant pass a quick test that we did i like it when it doesn't only give you a solution but how to do it right from this eight different solutions half of those are really good I, it tells you exactly what to do how to do it so and a beginner can do it but the other half it's it's hard uh, for a beginner you will still need more information so let's do a follow-up question this will be another quick test so let's do a follow-up of number three can you explain in detail solution number three? Let's see what we get. Let's see. To confirm that XY plane at the UCS is parallel to the plane of the boundary objects, you can follow these steps. Make sure that the dynamic UCS feature is turned on. Okay, first thing I want to mention is that indeed this looks or feels like a regular AI conversation i mean i don't know how many of you guys have used ai but we have created videos such as uh, using gpt chat with autocad that video has thousands of views and that feeling of fluency uh, between asking a regular question and then a follow-up question and having that conversation i'm feeling it also here with this new feature of Autodesk Assistant. Okay, so it expanded on that point. So that's great because now the beginners say, okay, number three, but how do I do number three? I don't even know what UCS is, like parallel, what? What the hell are you talking about? So now they can ask, hey, can you explain in detail solution number three? And it says to confirm that explain of the use, blah, 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 make sure the number is turned on select the home tab in the menu so these are good suggestions because now it's saying select the home tab so everyone might see or know that home is right there that's the tab and then where it says in the menu click on the draw panel and choose line blah 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 so yeah so now uh, anyone can follow these instructions so and it has, here, here it says generated AI response. So good. You can also access the same system variable by going over here under the options and change the gap tolerance right there. 
you can say one inch two inches or so on and then you can start hatching your area like so even though you had a big opening right there so in all of these we have videos on the channel explaining all of these different tips that we use now i can ask questions here inside the autocad autodesk assistant so i'm gonna end the chat here i say yes so because i have another question see if i'm gonna have to close my youtube channel or not <laughs> if this ai can create a macro command then i'm i'm done let's see now please create me a macro command to a macro for people who don't know it's a series of commands that we can put together and activate it with one single click we have created hundreds of macros on our channel on our patreon group so but anyway um, that's what in a short sentence what macros are so if this new ai technology can create command macros i'm done I'm, I'm a little scared here of pushing this triangular arrow i'm gonna just click here and hope for the best okay let's see what we get m space command view product documentation can find drawing in model space in autocad products if that wasn't helpful try asking in a different way or i can connect you with an agent Okay, but an agent is not gonna create a custom command macro for your needs, that's for sure. But nope, nope, that's bad news for you, but good news for me. View, no, that's that's not right. This is not useful information. Okay, anyway, we did the test. We already saw that. Um, I mean, what do you guys think overall? Do you think that these new features are gonna be useful?